we are moving on to division. When you see radical division, you can actually approach it in two different ways. One is to look at the things under the root and treat it like it is a large uh, radical with a fraction inside. And a fraction is just a division problem, so don't let fractions scare you. Um, in this case, 5 ninths. The other way is to check for perfect squares right away to see if anything can just go away at the beginning of the problem. Now in the case of this one here, it's actually a lot uh, more straightforward and more useful to notice that the bottom, the square root of 9, is equal to just a whole number 3. No radical, you dump the radical when you actually perform the square root. On top you have square root of 5, and 5 doesn't actually break down into any factors, so there's really no way to clean that up. So your final answer on this one is square root of 5 over the whole number 3. Same idea applies over here with radical division, uh, except there's two reasonable approaches that could work here. I'll demonstrate both so you can kind of decide which one you think is easier. On the bottom, uh, we have square root of 100, and I know that the square root of 100 is 10, because 10 times 10 is 100, leaving me with just the square root of 12 on top. Now 12, unlike 5 from the last example, does have factors. If you were to break 12 down, it would break down into 4 times 3. And that breaks down to 2 times 2. So 12 breaks down to 3 and 4, breaks down to 2 and 2. We actually do have a pair of squares and a left over here. Meaning that on top we would have a 2 that would come outside the radical, and we'd have a 3 left behind. From there, we can reduce this the way we would reduce any fraction, which is to say that anytime we have a number on top and bottom of a single fraction, we can divide both by the same thing in order to create an equivalent fraction. So if we divide the top by 2, 2 divided by 2 goes to 1. The bottom divided by 2 would go to 5, meaning our final answer is 1 square root 3, or simply square root 3, over 5. Another way to approach the same problem here would have been to treat this as square root of 12 over 100 as a single fraction and to start reducing inside there to say, oh, I know that I can divide both of these by 4. So if I were to divide 12 by 4, I would get 3. And if I were to divide 10 by 4, I would get 25, 4 quarters and 100 cents. So then I could then treat it as square root of 3 over square root of 25. I break it up. And my final answer would be square root of 3 over just a solid 5. So you can see that it doesn't matter which approach you use. If you do it correctly, they'll come out the same. Going down to this one, the approach of starting with uh, simplifying each one separately is going to make the most sense because both 4 and 25 are perfect squares. I have a number out front and I have to be careful not to lose that. So I have a 2 and then I have square root of 25 which is 5. So on top I have 2 times 5. Be careful. On the bottom I have 4 times this. The square root of 4 and the square root of 4 is 2. So I have a 4 times 2. Since I have a fraction, everything on top is being multiplied, everything on bottom is being multiplied, I can simplify without even uh, multiplying this all together. I can actually start reducing right now. I can divide the top and bottom by 2, by which I mean get rid of this factor of 2, leaving me with 5 over 4. If I had multiplied it, I would have got 10 over 8, and dividing by 2 in the more traditional sense would have got me back to 5 over 4 as well. Finally, this last one, the square root of 3 is not a perfect square, and neither is 6. So I'm going to have to do the fraction method. 6 over 3. And 6 over 3, well, I can divide the top by 3 to get 2, divide the bottom by 3 to get 1, and I'm left with 2 over 1, which is just 2. So I'm just left with the square root of 2. That's my answer. So that one comes out pretty simply. Good luck.